So thank you to um, DCO for the invitation and the honor to be here and to the organizers. It's a kind of hard act to follow all of these exciting um, field studies that were presented this morning. And uh, what I'd like to do is just kind of uh, give you an update and present some highlights of work that we've been doing um, resulting from the um, IODP Expedition 357 to the Atlantis Massif. And kind of the focus, is this the, yeah. The focus or, um, of this expedition was really to try and link the uh, process, the uh, effects of serpentinization to the subsurface biosphere in young um, mafic and ultramafic rocks that were exposed on the seafloor through detachment faulting. Um, how do I? Um, Go forward. No, there we go. Um, some of the um, questions or um, motivations for studying the Atlantis Massif is that mantle rocks are exposed through detachment faulting on the seafloor and have reacted with seawater along this um, pathway from deeper levels to the surface. So there's a lot of um, interest in looking at the tectonic magmatic processes, the fluid rock interaction, and the effects of serpentinization um, that w might have on life that um, can exist in the subsurface of these um, environments. But what I'd like to focus on <clears throat> today is mainly to use carbon um, and to um, look at how carbon is uh, cycled in these processes, the speciation distribution source of carbon-bearing phases. So the um, expedition used two seabed rock drills, which sit on the seafloor and drilled shallow cores. Um, <coughs> we recovered about 60 meters of um, serpentinized gabbros and talc schist from the shallow detachment um, fault zone at Lost City. Um, <coughs> they expanded across the southern wall of, of this massif. The um, expedition also included um, drilling, we, we mounted sensors on the drills to be able to um, monitor redox, methane, oxygen, pH and temperature while we were drilling. So this was the, the bottom water is used as the drilling fluid and we had san sensors that these, uh, the bottom water was pumped um, through to be able to document different variations in these um, parameters while we were drilling. And we were able to document horizons that had elevated methane, hydrogen, and um, reduced, um, so lower redox. We also have the capability to sample the fluids after drilling. We sampled the water column before we, we drilled, and then we had um, drill-mounted Niskin bottles to sample water after drilling. Another feature of the strategy for uh, Expedition 357 was to plug holes, and we were able to plug four of the boreholes um, for future fluid sampling. Because we had a strong microbiology focus to our expedition, it was also important to be able to put in chemical tracers for the microbiologists to be able to assess um, contamination in their samples. So um, if we look at the carbon phases in this system now, um, Lost City is one of the end members, is the, um, the product of serpentinization and the, whoops, can you go back to, yeah, sorry about that. Um, the, um, oops, no, <laughs> I'm using, I want to use that, can we back one please? Okay, um, the effect of alkaline fluids is essentially similar to the Oman system that Peter um, presented earlier. We have carbonate deposits instead of sulfides, but one of the, the, the very exciting features of the Lost City system is the fact that we have abiotic methane formate and hydrogen being formed and expelled in this system that is important for life. 
Another thing that's very important is there's no CO2 in these fluids, which implies that any seawater um, DIC had to be taken up in the basement before the fluids are expelled on the seafloor. And that also limits life in this um, system. I won't be talking much about life, but maybe we'll look at, um, I'll try to look at the carbon uh, species in the, in the system. We did water column sampling, as I mentioned, and here are plots of water, a hydrogen dissolved in, in the water before drilling, after drilling, and um, from the two different drills, and methane. And what we can see is that, especially near the Lost City field, we have elevated concentrations of both hydrogen and methane related to serpentinization. Um, and they are highest than um, in the central sites. We were also able to go back to Lost City last year with an expedition led by Susan Lang and did more water column um, studies along the eastern wall. Lost City is here, and there's a, a very steep eastern wall where we find carbonates that are coming out along the schistosity. Um, and the water column data, this is hydrogen, also shows that you have elevated hydrogen um, compositions and methane is the same um, in this area. And what's special about this wall is that um, instead of having vertical um, fluid flow, you have flow that's going horizontally along the schistosity. And when it exits, it then deposits this carbonate on, on the steep wall. Now, we've been doing um, methane extraction experiments with Marvin Lilly um, in our lab at the ETH. And uh, he's taken a number of samples from the Expedition 357 drill core, and he crushes about a gram of, of um, sample and can measure very low quantities um, with the mass spec. So this is his data showing um, delta C13 of methane from these crushing experiments um, in uh, relation to concentration. And one of the main things to um, really notice here is that we have a large variation. The green symbols are serpentinites from the um, Atlantis Massif. The brown symbols, the squares, are troctolites, so olivine-rich rocks. But we have a large variation in delta C13 and um, very low concentrations of methane in the serpentinites. And um, so the fluids that we are seeing with high methane values, they seem to be more trapped in the gebroic rocks. Um, we've also measured some of the samples that were drilled in the um, central um, dome of the Atlantis Massif, um, troctolites that come from depths below 1,000 meters. If we compare this data to, um, oops, there we go. Um, we also have done some Southwest Indian Ridge samples, and the Galbros there plot at the relatively um, heavy uh, or high end of the Delta C13, but also in a concentration range similar to the Galbroic rocks at uh, the Atlantis Massif. Um, the, high, the highest methane are trapped in oxide gabbros. So oxide gabbros really are um, a good source of methane in these um, systems. If we um, try to understand, I think, could you go back, please? Um, one of the things I um, didn't point out is that um, we often use the um, delta C13 values to determine biogenic, thermogenic, or abiogenic um, uh, methane. And in this system, we have the whole range. It covers all of, of these fields. But if we try and look at, at using um, hydrogen in the methane as well, 
then we um, come up with a different um, picture uh, where we might have the carbon spanning all of these fields, but the hydrogen falls in a very narrow range, and in many of the um, samples, the hydrogen doesn't even fit in any of these fields that are, for example, defined by Ethiop and uh, Shirley Waller. So we have um, a different mechanism that produces this methane. We don't quite understand why we have the low delta C13 values, um, but we do not think it's biogenic, or we're not convinced it's biogenic, and it may be a low temperature formation or reequilibration. And um, the problem here with low temperature, of course, is kinetics, but um, we've we need to think about that more. Okay, now if we look at uh, carbon in the basement, um, this shows the um, drill core, the total inorganic carbon, which is essentially carbonate with depth in the different drill cores, the organic carbon, and then the, the delta C13 of those phases. And we have, in general, the same range that we've seen before in uh, the, um, the Gavroic core um, at um, site 1309, but some of the um, layers are magnetite rich and have higher total organic carbon than um, what we've seen previously. With the delta C13, the um, organic matter falls within the general range that, that we've seen in, in the past and in other studies and could very well reflect uh, marine dissolved organic carbon from seawater that has been um, taken up in the basement rocks. What's interesting is that the um, delta C13 of the carbonate in um, these samples shows a strong non-seawater component um, and not all of the carbonates deposited in the basement are um, of seawater marine origin. If we look at the carbonate phases, we find that um, we don't only have calcite in the rocks. There's at least two generations of calcite, but we also have magnesite and dolomite coexisting in the same samples. And um, the carbonate is more abundant in the sites that are closest to Lost City, so the, the central sites that were, were drilled. And aragonite is consistently one of the late stages um, and a low temperature phase. If we look at the um, isotopic compositions of these carbonates, what we find is that we have two groups, um, a um, low temperature, seawater marine source, and a second group of, um, that are depleted in, in C13 and also have um, low delta 18 values that reflect higher temperature. So we have a higher temperature generation of carbonates and a low temperature generation of carbonates. Um, the delta C13 values indicate that we must have a non-marine um, component, whether this is um, uh, oxidized methane or um, oxidation of organic uh, matter in the samples that we really don't know. But the, um, using clumped isotopes, we can calculate the temperatures of these, this second phase. And uh, for the veins, in the cores, we get temperatures up to 184 degrees, whereas, um, th and this is, this is all bulk rock. The triangles are Lost City, and the orange are um, the carbonate veins, just to kind of clarify what those symbols are. But the veins show temperatures up to um, 170 degrees. So we have, um, at the, the Lost City, we have different phases of, of carbon that are being trapped in the basement rocks, and, um, and um, they record early higher temperature um, 
stages of alteration. So just to kind of summarize that, we do find um, evidence of ongoing serpentinization. Um, our results of crushing tend to indicate that maybe the methane and the high, at least the, the methane may be coming out of the oxide gabbros and the troctolites more than actually the serpentinites, and that um, some of this methane may have re-equilibrated or formed at, lo at lower temperature. I didn't have time to talk about um, the microbial studies, but essentially we had very low biomass, and uh, that there, um, it, it seems that it's very difficult for life in this extreme environment. Thank you.